All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. If you're anything like me, you've probably always wondered what just a basic AR-15 shoots like. We're talking out of the box, basic build, you know, A2 front sight post, backup sight, or maybe a you know carry handle or something like that. What kind of accuracy can you reasonably expect out of just an out of the box type gun? So uh, recently we did a CMMG Mark IV LE build from scratch. Uh, we actually have a video on that showing you how to build your own AR from scratch. And it goes into a lot of details on uh, how to accomplish that task. Um, and we promised that we would do a range video on that particular gun. So this is the gun from the build video. Uh, we've gotten the Magpul backup sight. It's the MBUS, standard MBUS. They do make a pro version of this sight that's metal. Uh, this is the polymer version. So we've got an MBUS that's zeroed. Uh, we're pretty much good uh, battle sighted out to about 300 yards. So we're going to take some shots and we're going to try to showcase as best we can the practical accuracy potential of this particular rifle uh, just from a standpoint of zero it, take it out, can you hit stuff with it? And what this video is kind of segueing into is we're, we're going to go over some upgrades. We're actually going to take this very rifle and we're going to slowly over time kind of upgrade things on it and kind of discuss what we're doing along the way in terms of upgrading this rifle and then kind of showcase what those upgrades do to enhance the accuracy of the firearm. Obviously, sighting systems are going to be a pretty big deal. I mean, obviously, if you run something like an ACOG or, you know, a nice optic, you're going to get a very consistent point of aim. You're going to get a better image of the target. You're going to be able to see what's going on downrange a lot better, spot your shots better. Irons kind of uh, can be difficult to get them to shoot super consistent when you're talking about something like a backup sight. Carry handle, you know, that's something we'll go to at a later time. Uh, iron sights obviously can be extremely accurate, but practical accuracy, how well is this little gun going to shoot? Well, let's find out. Um, so it's just a, basically an M4 style upper, 16 and a half inch barrel with M4 cut, A2 flash hider, A2 front sight, hand guard, standard hand guards, standard uh, mil spec furniture, standard mil spec trigger, pretty much a M4, more or less. So let's go for it. We're going to take a few shots here with iron sights and just see what our little CMMG Mark IV LE can do here. I'm running the small aperture. Uh, iron sights like these generally are going to have two different apertures. A larger one for kind of close range work where you really want that extra light transmission to be able to see targets up close. And then a smaller one for longer range work. We're going to be shooting targets uh, between 100 and 300 yards. These are all shootsteel.com uh, targets. Chad is going to spot. And uh, let's go for it. A couple at 100 here just to see where we're at, Chad. Yeah, go ahead and send them. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah. Two. Where were those at? Uh, dead center, um, stacking them into about five inches, give or take. That's not bad. So, and remember guys, backup sights. Yep. I mean, these guys are designed to flip down out of the way and you run your primary optic. All right, 250. Go for it. Yes, sir. All, all three of those on there? All three on the plate. Uh, first two were uh, pretty much dead center where the black is. Okay. Uh, within you know, about four or five inches, and then you had one that kind of strung a little bit low. Okay, So not bad. I tell you what, for fun, let, let's see if we can shoot that gopher. Go for it. I'm gonna go for it. Ah, ah, I see what you did there, you trickster. Let's see if we can hit a gopher at 250 yards with Magpul backup sights. He's tiny. I like building air castles. Let's yes, see. we do. Oh, right past his belly. Just past his back. Elevation's perfect. Oh, you got him right there at the toe. I uh, blew his, his, his foot off. <laughs> All right. We, we'll, uh, we'll call that good. 250 yards and a toe shot on a gopher. All right, we're going up to three. We've got two different targets down at three, guys. 
Uh, one of them is a, a big old round gong. How big is that particular gong? That one is a 22 inch. See, that's like that's kind of a big round, but we've also got a half size D28 uh, down at three as well. And that that's basically in terms of a military uh, rifle qual uh, target, half the size of a normal. Uh, military rifle qual target at 300 yards. So that so. one's, uh, I think, 12 by 20, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And that's a, kind of a small target. It is. All right. Basically simulating double the distance. It so. is. Oh, yeah. There's three rounds there. Starting to open up a little bit. I mean, sure. you know, all three are on the gong. They're spread out about a foot, though. So basically... So far with accuracy, we're talking minute of man at three. I mean, that's the idea. It's a battle site zero. Yep. So. All right. Uh, go into the half size D28. Send it. Now, to give you guys an idea in terms of size, takes up about a third of the front sight post. So this is getting more into the long lines of precision, long range work with irons. You start getting three to 500 yards out, those targets are going to appear pretty dang tiny. You gotta really do your part. Yeah, and we're just running 55 grain freedom ammo too, so. Got you. All right, ready? Yeah, send it. Just over his left shoulder there. Elevation's good, just a little bit right. Same thing, just a little bit right. Same thing, just a little right. Wow. Just low, right under him. Same place. That's a very difficult target to hit. It is. He's hard to see out there. But the thing is, I think we're, what we're starting to kind of see here, at least from the perspective of practical accuracy, if we had an ACOG or something, you could just about dome him at this distance with good ammo. Well, I got something to say real quick. I was out sure. zero in my 18-inch uh, gun the other day, and I just happened to try some of this particular ammo, and I was hitting that gopher just consistently for like an entire magazine, just yeah. right there in the face. So you're talking less than two inches at 250 or so yards yeah. with a good eight, you know, 18-inch barrel with a good multi, uh, variable power optics. So. Yep, yep. De definitely makes a difference. But this is practical accuracy. Let's go back to the other gong, and uh, let's just see if we can ring a few in on that other gong there. Going for three again? Yeah. Okay. Send it. Just low, Eric. Yeah, those shots are favoring a little bit low. You might want to um, bring your hold up just a tiny bit. Good. You're in there. Yes, sir. All right, for this second mag, I'm gonna pick up the pace. Now that I kind of know where we're aiming, I'm just going to try to go for it here. Send him. Starting to string around a little bit. All right, that was 253. Yep. Tell you one thing, just in rapid fire and kind of keeping it practical, you can really get some lead on target pretty easy out to like two, 250 yards, even with these backup sights, which is pretty impressive. Um, getting out to three, you definitely have to kind of take your time a little more. It's, it's definitely not as easy as just wrapping them out, especially with this trigger. It's kind of stagey and heavy. I mean, it is a, a military trigger. I'll tell you what, we've gotten the barrel pretty hot here. Yeah, it's stringing them around quite it, a bit. It They're is stringing. I, I can see that from here. Kind oh, yeah. of, They're stringing a bit. Let's try that uh, half-size D28 again. Yeah, go for it. Oh, whoa, <laughs> that went high and right. Just under him. Right over his head. 
Yeah, they're stringing all over the place. Down there past the coyote snout. Got it. Hit. Way left. Way left. Two feet off the target. Just low and right. They're, oh, wow. string, they're stringing all around now. So, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, that barrel starts to heat up, and those rounds will definitely kind of start stringing there, especially with this type of handguard design. So that's something that we're going to get into uh, in these future videos that we're talking about. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea. Chad is also going to shoot, so don't leave yet. Um, you know, you start to get into the floating of the barrel, okay, and that starts to, um, you know, relieve a little bit of that stringing that can come with, like, extended, uh, you know, uh, periods of firing the gun and everything like that. Obviously, the sighting system uh, is something that can be improved, okay? So that's something that we're going to look at. Trigger, um, you know, the trigger in terms of accuracy is kind of the, the link between you and the performance of this gun. The trigger isn't physically going to make the gun shoot better, but it will allow you to shoot the gun better. So in terms of accuracy, there's a lot of stipulations about trigger where people go, well, you know, this trigger is going to make the gun shoot better. Well, no, it's not going to make the gun shoot better. It's going to make you shoot the gun better. Accuracy really is a combination of a measure between what the rifle is capable of and what you as a shooter are capable of. You know, you can take a Marine Corps veteran or Army veteran or a guy that's, that's got a lot of experience with iron sights, like with an A2. Um, I generally can shoot an A2 quite well, but that's because I'm used to that particular rifle. Now you get a guy that, um, you know, the entire uh, period in his career that he owned an AR, let's say his gun, his gun owning career, uh, you know, he owned an AR the entire time and the guy built it out with fancy optics and a nice barrel and really spared no expense. Well, his idea of accuracy and repeatability in that accuracy is going to be much different than what an average person might consider who kind of started from this point and worked his way up versus a guy who just ran right out the gate with the race car basically and smoked everybody on every lap. So you, if you take a given sighting system and treat it like the tool it is and zero it properly, you can see that with a little bit of work, it'll definitely deliver the goods if you can deliver the goods. So I'm going to swap places with Chad. He's going to take a few shots here. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that this definitely shows some promise for accuracy potential. And that's a uh, journey that we're going to continue uh, along as we go here. All right, guys, I'm going to take a few shots with the uh, Mark IV LE build here. Uh, you know, it's only fitting that since I put the gun together, I get to actually take a few shots with it before we uh, start upgrading it. You know, we like to upgrade things. But uh, like Eric mentioned, this video is just all about practical accuracy. And to be honest with you, the Magpul MBUS sights, they're, they're okay, but I would much prefer to have a uh, carry handle uh, with a standard A2 style sight on here if I was going to be running irons all the time. Um, this sight is, it's adequate, let's just put it that way. And uh, like Eric mentioned, it is a backup sight, but um, shooting with iron sights is completely doable, especially out to long range. I mean, you look at all the long range competitions where guys are shooting uh, full size 20 inch national match rifles out to a thousand yards on basically man-sized silhouettes and uh, you know keeping shots within the x-ring which I think is like 10 inches I mean don't quote me on that I don't know for sure but I mean it's a small area okay and thousand yards with a you know like an 80 grain 556 five, pill and uh, it's it's pretty impressive but this barrel one thing that Eric forgot to mention this is a, a one in seven twist barrel and these are a nitrided if I'm not mistaken um, so one in seven, a lot of people don't think that 55 grain ammo is good for it, but one in seven can be used for everything from 55 all the way up to the heavy, like 77 grain pills with ease and uh, keep everything nice and stable and keep the uh, accuracy potential high. Um, we're just running some Freedom Munitions 55 grain, uh, newly manufactured ammunition here. I found this to be pretty accurate right out of the box. Uh, like I mentioned, I shot it in my 18 inch gun and uh, just practical accuracy up to 250 yards was spot on the money. And uh, just great stuff, but enough talking. Let me take a few shots here. I think this thing's probably cooled off enough to give me a fair chance here. And uh, I'm just gonna do basically like Eric did. I'm gonna take a few shots at the various targets between 100 and 300 yards, take some shots at our small uh, half-size D28 over there. Basically that's simulating a full-size target about 600 yards. So when you talk tiny, I mean, that thing is tiny. So let's see what we can do here. Whenever you're ready, Chad, go for All it. Right. I'm just running a regular GI spec Colt mag too, so you know, just regular stand A mag. And I'm back here spotting for Chad, so you'll probably yep. hear me talking here and there. All right. 
So one thing about iron sights, uh, you know, is consistency as far as sighting goes. So a lot of guys will run the nose to the charging handle. That's kind of a common thing. Keep your nose on the charging handle and you get a, you know, your eye kind of lays right in there and you can see exactly what's going on. So, all right, let's see what we can do here. What's that look like? Like about a two inch group. That's pretty practical. Um, one of the other reasons we were running 55 grain ammo is um, classically 55 grain, like uh, XM193 or uh, whatever 55 grain ball is typically more accurate than your 62 grain variety like the SS109 or the M855. Um, some of the M855 out there is supremely accurate, but most of it you're gonna get you know, two and a half to three minutes, whereas 55 grain stuff can cut your group sizes in half. So we're talking about a two inch group with iron sights at 100 yards with regular ball ammo. With irons, I'll take that all day, all day uh, long. Um, one thing that I've noticed with this particular build, and it's just something to consider, uh, if you put together a gun or you buy like a kit, uh, I'm noticing that this is a little bit over gassed. And uh, what it's doing is throwing the brass a little bit forward uh, around like one to two o'clock. Um, typically you want your brass to eject about four o'clock or so between like three and four and that's kind of the proper gas uh, for your rifle and it's not beating your carrier or your uh, receiver extension or any of your other components up and um, that's it's uh, kind of a tuning thing. We might get into that in a future video but just so you know this rifle is a little bit over gas so it could use a heavier spring and a heavier buffer um, but we'll get into that later on. But for now, we're just going to shoot it. All right, so 200 yards. That's a 18 by 24 inch target down there. Yeah. All right, your first three shots, Chad, landed into about three inches, and the uh, the second, uh, the last two shots in that five shot group opened it up to about five. Uh, whereabouts on the plate were they hitting? Pretty much dead center. Pretty much dead center. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm gonna take a couple of shots just for the fun of it at that half size D28 on the left that's hanging at 200 down there. Go ahead. About half the size, and I just wanna, I wanna see real quick. Let's see. Sweet. I'll take that. Yeah, so your first three shots landed into about the same, and then one shot landed about three inches lower than that, and then your fifth shot landed in the same group. Cool. So you're probably just getting a little bit of inconsistency, probably just from the fact you're running irons and it's such a broad point of aim, that's all. Probably. Not bad. But yeah, I mean, that's uh, basically equivalent of a man-sized target at 400 yards. So double the distance, half the size. So all right, let's take some shots at 250 there, and I might try on the gopher too, just for fun. Let's see. That was a little bit quicker, so. Yeah, uh, your shots were stringing just a little bit, but for the most part into about five inches, well-centered. Okay. All right, I'm gonna take a shot at our gopher. Go for him, <laughs> go for him. Oh, that freaking target is small. Oh boy, all right, let's see. Just uh, across his belly. Okay. Just oh. behind his head. Yeah! Hit the same spot I did, down low near the feet. <laughs> One more time, let's see if I can, I can oust Eric. Does that mean I get more shots? <laughs> nope. That oh, was right across nope. his belly. That's what I get. <laughs> All right, 300 yards. Yep. Oh, yeah. Getting on out there now. Oh, yeah.
All right, that triangulation, Chad, is about 12 inches. That's about what you were doing, pretty much. Yep. You know, it's just that target, when you get out there, I mean, it's still plenty minute of man, but it's just one of those things. I'm surprised, you know, that uh, little 55 grain pill still smacks with some pretty good authority at that range, too. Yeah, it does. There's no slouch, for sure. Take a few more shots there. Yeah. Ah, I think it went a little high, maybe. Uh, it just landed off the right edge of the plate. You're still on about a foot group. Okay. I mean, for irons, at that distance, it's not bad. No, not bad at all. Well, I'm gonna take a few shots out of the second mag on the small, uh, small uh, D28 down there, the black one that's half size, and uh, see how I can fare on that. And uh, I might go down to the 200 there and take a few shots on some of the smaller plates. We have some quarter size D28s that are like 10 inches tall, and then we've got some uh, small rounds, which I can't even, God, I can't even see those from here, down there in that shadow. Let's see. Whenever you're ready. All right, I'm gonna take a shot at the, a uh, few shots at the black target down there at 300. I mean, that thing is just about impossible to see. Holy cow. All right. Just over his head. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> man, that's crazy. Yeah, it's weird, man. Wow. In the lower edge of the gong. Okay. You just barely nicked the corner on the bottom right corner. Oh, wow. Better. There go. Um, in between the coyote and the gong, so yeah. a little low. Certainly hard to get a consistent point of aim at that range. Yeah, especially with that coyote being underneath, it kind of throws it off a bit. It does. Right in the face. Yeah, kind of all over the plate, but still. It is. It's a small target at this range. Like Eric said, I mean, it only takes up about a third of the front sight post. And that's, yep. that's very difficult. Yeah, and, and when I was shooting at it, I was that was after a <laughs> kind of a hot and heavy <laughs> string there. Yeah. And that those barrels tend to whip around a bit when they get hot. They do. Plus, you know, the uh, the, the car hand guards, the delta ring, the uh, front retaining, um, uh, cap here for the hand guards. All that plays into the harmonics of the barrel and after it starts heating up and everything That's why a lot of guys for accuracy they go with a free float barrel and we're going to get into that in the uh, future Series with this rifle where we accurize it and such we're going to show you guys how to do all that stuff and see exactly What kind of improvement it makes? Um, we'll take one more shot at that target there. Go ahead uh, yeah. All right, so counting the misses Chad Probably about a foot, foot and a half group overall. So pretty much consistent compared to the 22 inch round, but just, yes, it, it's a tough target to hit. I mean, it's just, it's kind of a challenge. So. It is. All right, I'm gonna go for some of those quarter size uh, D28s down there at two. Let's <laughs> see if I can smack a couple of those things just for fun. Go for it. Oh my God, those things are tiny. Yeah, they are. Let's see. A little bit easier to see. That's not the one I was aiming at. I was aiming at the one on the left. I'll take it though. Let's see. <laughs> well, that was fun. Right in the center. There we go. Were you aiming at the one on the right? Yeah, I was okay. moving to the moving to the right. Got you. That hit low, about a foot. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah sun popped out, man. That one on the right's probably just gonna elude me, I guess. Yeah, oh well. Man, those targets are tiny. Yeah, they are. All right. All right, I'm just gonna kind of wrap these things out of here and just see what we can do from 100 to three. Low. There you go. Low. 
Yep. You're on it. Low. Oh man, low. You're on it. Low. Low. Didn't quite fare as well in rapid succession as you did. Well guys, I hope you can see the uh, literal practical accuracy of this platform just as it sits. I mean, this is a basic build. This is something very similar to what you would find in uh, your local gun shop just on the shelf, a bare bones AR. And sometimes they don't even come with a backup sight. They just come with a flat top. So, you know, you have to purchase a sight, get it zeroed. And uh, that's one thing we failed to mention too is the distance that we zeroed at was 50 yards. That gives you a good battle sight zero all the way out to 250 with just basically aiming directly at your target. And uh, we're holding a little bit high at three. Basically, if you consider like a man-sized target, hold at the head and you hit dead center. This rifle is performing exceptionally well. Very, very pleased with the accuracy potential uh, of this platform. We are going to be taking this exact rifle, dropping a, a 10 power optic on it, doing some grouping work with it, and then slowly upgrading it. And we're gonna take you along for the ride, but stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Much more on the way. You guys take it easy.